this is yeah, several songs in English with Ing Indian tune. I think he is the first master to do anything to write in English with Indian tune, I think. History, I think. And uh, this 1880 is very important for you. I'll repeat the words in English and then they will translate to the meaning in your words, in your language. Serenity, regularity, absence of vanity, sincerity, simplicity, veracity, equanimity, fixity, non-irritability, Adaptability, humility, tenacity, integrity, nobility, magnanimity, charity, generosity, purity, practice daily, teach a unity. You will soon attain immortality. Brahman is the only the real entity. <coughs> Mr. So and so is a false non entity. Mr. Salvador and Mrs. Salvador is a false non entity. Because there's only Brahman exists. And we cannot attain these in the university, nor in metric city. But you can attain in your Yoga Vedanta Forest University. This is called Yoga Vedanta Forest University. <laughs> Here, there is nothing, only forest, trees. That's the song 18, please. And then Gurudev's main teachings are summed up at that. Serve, love, heal, purify, meditate, pray life. Serve, love, Purify, meditate, pray life. Adapt, adjust, accommodate, bear insult, bear injury, ayes to yoga, ayes to sadhana. That is the end of all the bear insult, bear injury. I understand that. And El Salvador, Salvador gets angry. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I'll sing. You try to sing English, okay? Now you know the meaning of it. Suna Jan, Suna Jan, Suna Jan, Krishna, Sugi, the Valajan, Teach me, Sunaja, teach me the Gita and the essence of Gita. And such knowledge coming from the Gita, let me hear from you. That's called Sunaja, I mean, let me hear from you. Sunaja, 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 Krishna, Sugeda Valajana.
bear insult, bear injury. These are the two acid tests for all yogis, all spiritual aspirations. <laughs> Anyone put here for the hand, please? <laughs> <coughs> These two are the major tests where they have progressed in yoga, especially in Raja Yoga or any yoga. Because the mind must be still. Chitta yoga chitta vati nirodaha. Raja yoga, the first aphorism is yoga chitta vati nirodaha. Yoga is stilling the more mental modification. As Padanjali Maharshi in Raja Yoga Sutras explains about the definition of yoga. <coughs> Your chitta or mind is like the ocean and there come various waves, small waves and big waves. And according to the nature of the waves, the ocean is disturbed. Sometime when I walk through the early morning walk, beach, you see lots and lots of the seaweeds are thrown on the beach because there could be, there was previously a big and the powerful waves. And other days I walk, there is no beach at all. Waves are very small. And someday there is no waves at all, absolutely still. And Patanjali explains about yoga is stilling the mental <coughs> wave or thought waves. Yoga, chitta. Chitta represents your mental lake or mind or the ocean, comparison to the world. And when you can stop these thought waves, sometimes big thought waves, you call it emotions, sometimes small thought waves, small ripples. These thought waves we call moods. We all have moods. We are, we also have sometimes angry and angry mood, two things. When the emotions are very high, high wave, you call it ang emotions, higher emotions or angry. The seven basic emotions, lust, anger, greed, hatred, jealousy, envy, fear. <coughs> And when they are not always angry, Sarva do never get angry all the time with Ahimsa. <laughs> Only sometimes. And, uh, but he came back from his office work after doing all the building, all the buildings all over the world. And um, a lot of trust and strain because there many big buildings, you know, lots of strain. And came home. Of course, he is not in a good mood. We all know. And Ahimsa looked at Salvador. Well, he 
is not in a good mood. And uh, Radha Krishna came to mommy, mommy, ask daddy to buy me a motorbike, moped. <laughs> <laughs> Himself said, Not today. He's not in a good mood. <laughs> He's not in a good mood. Keep on. <laughs> and moreover, I himself was driving the car. I made a little dent in the car. <laughs> she has released this news to him. <laughs> I made a dent in the car. <laughs> that angry mood because anger, he will hit the ceiling. The mood becomes emotional, uncontrollable. <laughs> but another day he came, he had lots of contracts and built lots of buildings and made lots of money and it's a very happy mood. He, uh, he came home to happy and have cigar in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, I'm just making this all in. Please don't take it seriously. <laughs> and now Ahimsa said, I made a dent in the car. Don't worry, it's all right. <laughs> we buy a new car today. <laughs> I'm going to buy two motorcycles, one for Radha Krishna and one for Gopala, Venu Gopala. They're all happy. And Radha said, what am I going to get it? Well, you are going to have a, a big, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, doll? Uh, what kind of doll is that, you know? The cabbage cabbage ball. Cabbage ball doll, I'm going to get it. Ah, they're all the happy. <laughs> we always look everyone's mood. The mood is raised, lower raised. You are in good mood or bad mood. You will not approach your best friend when he is in a, or she is in a bad mood. But you can approach them when they are in a good mood and open all your heart and you get every help you want. Even husband or the wife, the same thing. Wife, Ahimsa works very whole day. She cleaning the carpet and cleaning the dishes and uh, washing the clothes and washing the socks and uh, and uh, he vacuumed about ten times that vacuum the carpet and uh, vacuum Salvador and then uh, he lit a cigarette and put some cigarette ash on the carpet and she will just blow up. That mood become very higher emotion. So these emotions, anger, greed, hatred, jealousy, envy, fear, the fear is the most damaging emotion because it destroys every cell in the body when the fear emotion comes. So the anger, the greatest, uncontrollable, you may take a knife and stab your dearest friend. Afterwards, oh my God, what did I do? Your intellect is serving. You cannot control your emotions. So there are two things, emotion and mood. And moods we are having, good moods and negative moods and positive moods. But Padajali says, even this mood will eventually will bring destruction of your nervous system and endocrine system, physiologically. Constant worrying about some problem, you get ulcer because you are secreting more acid in your stomach and slowly, slowly, the acid is burning your walls of your stomach. This little mucous membrane which protects the stomach muscles. Eventually get ulcers. And worrying constantly, you get constant pain in your neck because by contracting the muscles of the facial muscles, you are not aware of it. Mild contraction. And with this contraction, you go to bed and uh, still worrying in the bed. At last, you left and got up, still you are having the same. Eventually you get pain, it radiates through your arms, etc. It's now well known that all
all emotions do affect our endocrine system, that is your ground block system and your nervous system. It's well known. So, Padanjali says, the best test is whether you have able to still the mind or not is bear insult, bear injury. <coughs> Someone starts holding me, no, first praise me, so I'm Vishnu, you are the greatest yogi in the world. I've never seen a person like you. Thank you. <laughs> All my teeth you can see. <laughs> and another question that, mm, you are the first crook I ever seen. <laughs> well, I can't do that externally. I cut all my muscles under control. And she's, she's or he's calling me. You are, you are a treat, you came to make money and you came to do this. <laughs> But he was crucified. Before that he was crucified, he has to carry the cross, he has to bear the thorn as a crowd. People spat and scolded. And then he was not merely crucified afterwards. He was put between the two thieves. The thieves also were crucified and he also was put between the two to show that you are not just ordinary human being, you are a thief like these two criminals. Yet, he accepted. In a little time he had a doubt. Father, why did I have for the forsaken me? Very short time. But this doubt has suddenly disappeared. And the Father forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. By crucifying this physical body, they cannot crucify the self, they don't understand the self, Atman. They think only the body is everything. Forgive them, they are like children. <coughs> if he had used his magic powers, spiritual powers, then you will never consider him as great Jesus. He will be like any other Hitler or Mussolini or Mao. No, same with this Gurudev Shivananda. His own disciple came with an axe and tried to murder him. But he prostrated before him and garlanded him and gave present and sent him home. Gurudev said that God came in the form of an assassin. He did not say he is an assassin. He's like he is only God too. That's called bear insult, bear injury. They can take enormous amount of these. We are weaklings, that's called, it's not the strength, we don't have the strength. When someone quotes me, I'm immediately worried about it. 
I get angry, I get despondent. Because I don't have the strength to be fast. That means I'm not established in Radio. That's the truth. So when you see that you can take this bear himself, bear into you. You see everything is God. There's no one is holding, no one is non holding. We are all the one same. The no one knowledge and the no one are the same. The person who is cold is also God. And the person who is colder is also God. God does both. The, the God is the thief and God also is the policeman. Everything is God. When you see that one, you will be able to stop this bearing self-doubt. The mind is steady, no more bearing like pendulum. That's why Guru Reshwaradha said, this is the added test for you, that bearing self-bearing pendulum. That shows your mind is steady. The highest sadhana means spiritual practice. And if you have practiced this, you are steadying the mind. And that is the highest yoga. So tomorrow if you ask, what is the highest yoga? What do you say? Everybody. And tonight in the dream if I come and ask, what do you say? And uh, in the breakfast I come and ask, what do you say? And in the breakfast I throw porridge on you, what do you say? <laughs> So you just wear yourself very So you understand the entire yoga. Guru Dev has put in simple sentence. Serve, love, give, purify. When you serve, love and give, you purify your heart. And then meditate. Then meditation comes easily. And then you realize. I follow Guru Dev's instructions very to the very word, to the very letter. All this I practice. Serve me, love me, give me everything what you have, and I'll meditate for you. <laughs> I practice it implicitly every day. So all of you should serve me. You all should serve me and love me and give me everything. And I'll meditate for you all. I'll, re I'll realize it. You'll come with me and I realize it. No, that is not. Serve others as seeing God, love everybody, give whatever you have, and that will feel for your heart. Then meditation will come natural. Then adapt, adjust, accommodate. We have to learn these three basic things. We cannot find everything what we want. This is where we go. Something will be always missing. So we came to this beautiful island. Not everything perfect, but at least we had a, a place to sit and a place to meditate. And we had some bathroom and we had a kitchen and some water. What more do you want? So adapt, adjust, and accommodate. We accommodate. Bear in certain bear injury. This other way, you know that you are progressing. You heard two days ago the heaven and hell. Many of you think, think oh, it's all some quiet imagination. Well, we don't have to go to hell to find heaven. <coughs> we do have hell here. I was reading the latest Time magazine. Of course, there are fake. Several babies been, after five, six days, seven babies been rescued. And some of the babies lying on the dead body, under the dead body for four days. 
and somehow they survived. Then I was reading an article about uh, the, the great uh, cultural revolution in China. Many of the great Maoists associated marching with him, the great march, eh? march with him. And uh, it's a hellish march. Afterwards, they all became great ministers and prime ministers and foreign ministers and generals and presidents, etc. When cultural revolution came, Mao put the young people, food rooms, into action. All these great people who marched with Mao, and they got great names as presidents and prime ministers, etc. Most of these people have been tortured by the Red Guards. Yes, we'll read that, then you'll understand. See, we see that there's a concentration camp here. All the hellish spirits is here. We don't have to go any other place. article we take it. You see, they all have great names and suddenly their fortune turns. Not like that. Just put it straight. Not that. Not that thing it appears. Why do you just bend it? turned on his comrades in arms and launched the Cultural Revolution. At the end of June 1959, Mao Zedong made his way up the lovely valley, a mountain known as <coughs> Lushan, a 4,900-foot peak high over the valley of the Yangtze. Cool, clear air flowed about Lushan's crown of flowers. Sitting in a wicker chair on a terrace looking out over the valley, waiting for his comrades to join him at a Politburo meeting, Mao took brush in hand and wrote a poem, which he called The Ascent of Lushan. This, during this march, a great march, Mao and his people marched about 5,000, 6,000 miles. Many of them died. And, um, and he came to this hill after going through the snowy mountains and uh, going caught in the grassy marsh where the people just disappeared into the marsh. And uh, he arrived at, at last and now he is writing a poem, he wrote a poem. I have left over 400 turns to reach the green crest. Now cold-eyed, I survey the world beyond the seas. As he surveyed the world, Mao must have focused on some of his problems. 
the aftermath of his great leap forward, backyard steel mills, his deep split with Russia, atom bombs, and the views of some of his own comrades from the long march, critical. Because he's talking about now, many of his comrades are criticizing about his cult, uh, the backyard furnace and um, all those um, communes, etc. They're criticizing it's not working. And now he is looking back some of those suffering he had with his comrades and he wrote that poem. Now he is unleashing the energy to his, his own comrades who walked and marched through the hellish time and he sent in thugs to humiliate, to torture. And that's the fate we are experiencing. Mao's revolution had begun to sputter. No longer, he felt, did his comrades possess the fire of the long march. They were welcoming traitors to the cause. Always he had believed in Luan, the rage of anarchy, and destroying the old to create the new. The time had come for him to act. Tough old Peng De Huai, China's comrade in the war against the Japanese, and in the war against the Americans in Korea, had been down in Hunan. He had found a disaster. Peasants without food, fields unsown, industry wrecked. Blunt and honest, Peng put his findings into a letter to Mao. Mao reacted by removing Peng as defense minister. He was trans say, the Peng was the defense minister. He wrote about the condition of the country condition of those small, tiny furn um, um, furnaces he made behind the backyard. <coughs> Many of the fields are not cultivated. Peasants are starving. His cultural revolution is completely, his revolution is not taking any roots. People are now against. And the Feng wrote, the defense minister wrote a real condition, what is happening. And Mao's reaction is he took the Feng off and from the defense minister, ministry, and see what happened. Next. He was transferred to a suburb west of Peking, where he did farm labor. See, he was a defense minister, now he's a farm labor. Not only an ordinary farm labor, see what condition he had to go. This was the end, a Chinese observer said. After Lushan, no one talked back to Mao. Everyone shut up. It was too dangerous. He wanted to talk, it's too dangerous. Lushan, led straight to the Cultural Revolution. With the coming of the Cultural Revolution in 1966, Peng was soon in the hands of the interrogators. That means this Peng, this Peng son, this defense minister is marked with him. Now he is under the control of this Peng son. And he has been interrogated every day and night. He was beaten and beaten <laughs> interrogated and interrogated. He shouted his denials and pounded the table so fiercely that his cell shook. He said, I have not done it, anything. But they won't believe. They all go on asking questions and interrogating until he has got no more strength. I fear nothing, he bellowed. You can't shoot me. Your days are numbered. He was knocked to the floor by heavy fists and kicked by jackboots until his lungs were perforated and his ribs broken. He was hauled through the streets. He was 68 when this began and 76 before it ended. For eight years he had been tortured, kicked and tortured and interrogated. No sleep, no food, and his lungs have been, uh, uh, the, uh, the ribs have been uh, broken and the lungs have been, no medicals. And this type of suffering went for eight years. He was tough. He was questioned 130 times. Finally, he could no longer rise from his bed. He was deprived of the right to sit up. See, he's not allowed to sit up. To drink water. He's not allowed to drink water. To go to the toilet. The toilet. To turn over in bed. He cannot turn over or in the bed. He died on November 29, 1974. Now you understand what the hellish life is? Okay, go ahead. Wang Jiaxiang who had brought back from Moscow in 1938 Stalin's recognition of Mao as leader of the Chinese Communist Party. This Wang came from Moscow 
stand by Stalin as Mao is the leader of the Communist Party. And now what happened to that man and the great man? He was another of Mao's victims. Arrested in 1967, he was dragged to public platforms, cursed by Red Guards, spat upon, struck in the face and knocked to the ground until he suffered a heart attack. For 18 months, Wang was held in total isolation and total darkness. His wife, Su Tongli, was a doctor, but she was not allowed to treat her husband. Red Guards seized Wang's son and tortured him to death. You and his son, family, the whole family. In January 1974, Wang died. He was 73. Marshal He Long, one of the founders of the Red Army, had been warned of danger by Premier Chu Enlai late in 1966. So he fled with his wife, Su Ming, to the Western Hills. For a while, He Long lived fairly peacefully, but the police finally came for him. He long had suffered for years from diabetes and was on insulin. The authorities halted the insulin and gave him glucose injections. See, opposite. See, they did not give the insulin, but they gave glucose. That means more sugar and the insulin coma. <coughs> he long was finally taken away in an ambulance. His wife was not permitted to follow. The hospital injected more glucose. <laughs> Heilong died that same day. His wife served six years at forced labor. General Yang Shang Kun spent more time in prison than any other Long March commander, 12 years. Arrested in 1966 as a spy for both the Soviets and the U.S., he was taken before mass struggle sessions of hundreds of thousands of Red Guards. They made him do the airplane. That's one of the things they had to perform uh, by Boeing like that. It's very hard. They had to stand for a long time in that. Because aeroplane, one of the torturing uh, positions. Bowing down with his arms stretched out behind him like wings. He cannot move. He had stayed in that position. His wife was made to clean toilets in a six-story building, up and down on her hands and knees. But no one in my family was killed, says Yang. Some of my comrades were killed, and their children were killed and maimed. I was rather lucky. In the official compound of Peking, the house of Liu Xiaoqi, <laughs> president of China, okay, just wait, just wait. <laughs> In the official compound of now the, the president of the Chinese, uh, the great nation, the president, what happened to him? The house, of, the house of Liu Shaoqi, president of China, was next door to Mao's. <laughs> next door, because Mao was the prime minister. In July 1966, Liu belatedly realized that he was the number one target of the Cultural Revolution. When Liu strolled over to speak to Mao, guards barred the door. He was not allowed to see the Mao, the president. <clears throat> he telephoned. No one accepted his call. Liu's eldest son and eldest daughter were exiled to the Burma border, where the eldest son would die and the daughter would be confined to a cow pen. A cow pen, like a, you know, the uh, horse pen or cow pen, pig's pen, like his second son, Liu Yunrao, was jailed. So was another daughter, Ping Ping. The youngest daughter, Xiao Xiao, 10 years old, was beaten by her classmates and forbidden to attend school. <coughs> Premier Chu warned the Liu's not to step outside the protected official compound. See, they told the president by the Chow Lai that don't go outside this compound, then your life will be in danger. 
but they lured him by false methods. See how they got him outside the compound. But the Red Guards lured Liu's wife, Wang Fang Mei, out with a trick. They told her that her daughter, Ping Ping, had been badly injured and taken to a hospital. <coughs> At a struggle session, they slapped Liu in the face with a little red book of Mao's quotations until his cheeks bled. They deprived Liu of sleeping pills. He lay, lay awake all night. Because he needs sleeping pills to sleep. <coughs> they didn't give sleeping pills. He had to keep awake all night. His room flooded by glaring lights. Even the night, bright light is put on his face. While his wife was imprisoned in Peking, Liu was suddenly flown, half-dressed and ill, to a maximum security prison in remote Henan in October 1969. He was thrown on a basement floor, half-conscious, suffering from pneumonia. <coughs> Lying on the cement floor, his hair uncut for months, a foot long, his mouth and nose deformed, blood on his chin, Liu died November 12, 1969. It was years before his death and its circumstances were publicly acknowledged. Marshal Su Dei, Mao's oldest military comrade, could not have known that all this would happen when Mao summoned men of the Long March to Lushan. But perhaps he saw some of the coming troubles when he said to his comrades, <coughs> quote, to think that once we all ate out of the same rice bowl. So this one is some of the torturing bonds. Look at the concentration camp, the Dako, etc. Look all the great deep march. They suffered quite a lot. Now you understand what hell means. Hell is not only then when you live here. These people, they also abused their power. When they were in high power, highest power, they tortured millions of poor Chinese. They killed, they tortured, they thrown into the prison. And the same reaction, karma came back to them in the form of cultural revolution. <laughs> so what I'm trying to bring this message to you is, do not abuse any power you have. Because if you abuse your power, either psychic power, spiritual power, or monetary or political power, doesn't matter where you go, who is your friend makes no difference, it will come back to you. That's the law. This law you cannot change. As many people doubt about law of karma. In the same book there is a long march. The suffering many people went into the march and they did not come out. But these other people became the rulers of China. And once they got the power, Mao and her wife and the, the, the so-called four gang together, they did so much harder. And what happened to Mao's wife after? She was supposed to be the next powerful person. But somehow she has been, she and her, her four gang now stand in the jail. And the present Dang, uh, what is his name, Dang? And, uh, yeah. His son, he also was several times been sent to jail, several times by Mao. And uh, his son was, one of his son was thrown from the fourth floor, thrown down. And he, he was, his hip was broken and his body was broken. And he was not allowed to get any treatment. And still he's paralyzed. And only recently only he's brought to the Peking since he became the, the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister, whatever it is, the position. All his children and wife been tortured by Mao. Yet he was the, one of the closest associates marching with him. But once they got the power, <coughs> they don't know how to control their power. That's the greatest mistake. Power corrupts. This is what type of power it is. I keep power, spiritual power, you are corrupted more. Political power, uncontrollable. You know who is, I am the president, I am the president, I can do anything I want. 
So all these people who try to control the mass with the power, they will somehow or other suffer in this life or next life and come back as worms and animals as prasad in the book. So you know that this karmic theory is not just an accidental thing. The whole world is run by karma. And you are lucky to have a training like that you have for four, four weeks. If you have gone to Rajini Sarsham, there is no such um, training. And again, the same magazine, there is an article about Rajini Sarsham. He is complaining about all those people who ran away. And they made tunnels from their house to the, even the Guru's house. Every person who is staying, they made tunnels to find out what they are doing at night to the tunnel. Eh? Eh? But then the, even the, he, he saw the, there was a tunnel going without this knowledge. People can go into his house. That's called auction. That's called spiritual place. Here we got nothing, just a simple tent, a simple place. There's no gun. But you had the highest knowledge. Very difficult to get in Kali Yuga, in this iron age, to get this knowledge. People are there only to try to bind you with power, money, position, drugs, alcohol, etc. And if you understood what we are trying to give you and to try to stick to this discipline, self-discipline, and impart this self-discipline through your own <coughs> example, not by preaching. Your own example, you are helping even if you can have two or three people take them away, away from the drug, away from the alcohol, away from their problems and see themselves disappear. Even few people, if you do, you have done a great job in your life. If you give money to a hungry person, he will eat and he needs more money. If you give any other thing, <coughs> objects, they lose the object, object will disintegrate or will go away, or they need more objects. But if you give this such such discipline knowledge, no one can steal it. That's all our happiness too. We gave you this. If you want to guard it and discipline your life, the wealth is yours. You can just throw it away like a glass piece after the such training and go some of the features I heard. Then primary, 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 primary screening. And they went and gone screaming. <laughs> After taking this training, that means they didn't understand anything about the training. Satsumati, <coughs> that thou art, you are that immortal self. You are not a weakling, you are not a sinner. That is the central teaching we gave you. Treat this. Sattvamati, that the what we gave step by step method how to conquer your physical body, astral body, and fossil body, etc. You got the technique and the training. If not, you just go back into ordinary way. Then I tell a small story. The story is. Another a hunter, you heard one hunter story. This is another hunter. He went for hunting. And after chasing various animals, he is tired. Now, it's a midday, the sun is very hot. So he sat under a shady tree opened his lunch box and is about to enjoy his midday lunch. But there was a lion nearby bush. He is also hungry. He is also looking for his lunch. And uh, this lion saw from the bush this hunter sitting calmly. Uh, and he thought, this is my lunch. <laughs> And by chance he saw from the bush 
This big lion is about to pounce on him. And she's got no time to escape to anywhere. But luckily, he was sitting near a bell, as you heard, the other type of bell. And he's about to jump inside into the bell. But when he looked, there was no water. It is dry and empty. That will be jump. It's going to break his head and neck. But over and above, at the bottom, there lies a python waiting for his lunch also. So he has got no two choices. Either it can be the lunch for the lion or lunch for the python. Which would you prefer? Python. <laughs> well, but by chance, he looks on the walls of the well, there was a creeper, wine, and thick one. So he caught one of the wine and started hanging in between the walls. And the lion is looking from the top, Python is looking from the bottom, and he's hanging on the wall. Now he has got some rust. As this particular situation at this time, he's still hungry, he didn't even open the lunch box. He saw a beehive nearby on the walls of the well. And to his surprise, there were small holes. From these two holes came a black rat and white rat. And they started cutting the, the wine in it which is hanging. Black rat and they're busy. But he didn't care about that. He saw the beehive full of honey and of course lots of bees. He used one of his hands pull all those honey comb and he was enjoying the <coughs> honey. honey. But the bees would not allow him to do that. They start giving him, stinging him all over the... <coughs> but he didn't care about the bees singing, he didn't care about the rats are cutting, the wine, he didn't care about the python, he didn't care about the... Lion. The lion. He's only enjoying the honey. Ah. And he's bitten all over. And you think that must be he must be a, a fool. Once the wine is cut, he'll go back to the python. This story illustrates our life too. The lion represents what? Lion represents what? Dead. Dead. Old age. Grey hair, eyes gone, arthritis, is a heart problem, liver problem. The old age is rushing, rushing us, chasing us every moment, every moment. You heard the story, every moment. You are not the same person. The old age is chasing you, that's a lion. And chases to where? The python. What does the python represent? Death. 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 And what the wine on which we are standing, what the wine represents? Wine represents? Maya. The lifetime, lifespan, 100 years. We are hanging on this 100 years of lifespan. And white rat and black rat represent? Day and night. Day and night, that's right. And day is cutting, it's gone now. And the night is going, we are going to sleep comfortably, but you know, sleeping back. But night rat is going to cut it out. So day and night is going on cutting and cutting short your life. You are not aware of, you don't even think about it. You think tomorrow will come, tomorrow we are going to the castle and we are going to have our dinner. That's all important. <laughs> have you paid for it already? <laughs> Before you die, just get the money. <laughs> so the black rat and white rat is cutting day and night, goes on. We are not aware of it. We think tomorrow we'll come and go and get married after I have children, grandchildren. 
and my great grandchildren will come up and he will be ruling the uh, Spain and the uh, Basque, etc. All this you are thinking by that time, ah, ah, gone. Life is finished. <laughs> so, the honey. English. And the honey <coughs> comb and the honey, honey bees. Honey bees represent what? The place of honey bees. The place of honey bees. Ah, the pain, stunning from a problem from this and problem from that and cancer and the aid and children's problems and my husband's problems and this problem so many diseases are not there they're all singing everyone is singing you left and right and all over this tongue and that honey represents the breeze little and the sense pressure to get a sense pressure thousands of bees must biting you and the old age coming and creeping and the death is waiting Yet we forgotten all this, only want to enjoy the sense of pleasure. <coughs> if you don't believe what I just now said, you can read that great march. He has given a small... No, don't, we don't have no time. We don't have time. You can read tomorrow. Uh, about the march. They have given the... They, write, they have written a book now, and uh, in the small... He has got some extracts of that book about the great march. The suffering these people have gone, and um, they had to climb this snow mountain. They got only wet clothes, and so there's no food for them. And they had there's no place to cook, no food, and they had to eat raw rice and the chew. This way they marched, and then when they came to grasslands, another area, the no human being ever set foot in that area, grassland, <coughs> where it's full of tall grasses and that little water and that mud and the people just will disappear into that. No one knows where that is coming up. The suffering they've gone through, unbelievable. And yet what did they get? And the end they got same problem. They they just got whatever the thing you heard. That's all our life. We don't think about all this. So have this passion for it. Vairagya, look at others when they have cancer, AIDS, blood pressure, heart trouble. Think about how you can escape from that. We are taught you the method. If you are vegetarian, eat simple food, but like what you did. If you are asana prana, you don't get all these things. And you don't get the suffering of the AIDS and indigenous disease, cancer, etc. Otherwise, even if President Reagan, he got cancer of the colon. They had to cut his colon out. And still there's no guarantee. It's only five years guarantee, they say, maybe. It will come back again. There's no guarantee. So don't depend on your medicine, doctors, money, bank balance, your power, position. Everything will disappear. That's what Gurudev says. Time drifts away, kings and barons. There is no king or baron can stand. They are always swept away. Where is Napoleon? Where is Nehru? Where is Gandhi? Where is Kennedy? Where is Indira Gandhi? They're all one bullet. That's all. Where is Hitler? That's all. Where is Mussolini? And all that. Where is Franco? He was the greatest ruler of Spain. Complete control of the Spain. Where is he? So, just a few years only, everything is time such sits away, like the lion chasing. You don't see it. Just like the story. They don't understand that. They think mm -hmm. they're only immediate happiness, immediate power. For that they will do anything. Now you've got the technique and training. And do not waste your time. Every moment spent in study, in discipline, in selfless service, and helping humanity through the technique you learned which you are practicing in your daily life. Don't be a yoga preacher. We want yoga practitioners. You can see preachers everywhere. But they are only preaching. They don't care about the practice. Yoga is not a 
speaking is the practitioner. If you understand that, you understand the whole purpose behind it. We taught you the technique of survival and self-discipline. We can lead a healthy and happy life. A little amount of money will be contented. Other any amount of money and power and position, you only get mad. You abuse this power and get more negative karma. That's all my whole purpose of coming. And you had already met, several times mentioned your knowledge is not just only in this life. You have taken this knowledge to our life in the past. And you are further evolving further to your effort. And many of the knowledge you've forgotten, I will be only reminded you, reawakened you. You know these things. And you also must reawaken this knowledge in others. Wherever you go, tough small center, you can get affiliated to our organization, or you can start a center, full center, full time, and uh, become part of our organization. Or you can join us if you have capacity, like all the same people serving. Lots of our staff will train you and send you to various parts wherever you are talent is needed. And uh, whatever we take, you get it. We cannot ass assure you that everything will be wonderful and happy. We are struggling, and you can struggle with us if you have the capacity to struggle and work with our organization. teaching is who am I and the answer is I am that I am or I am Brahmatma or I am a father or one I am in you you are in me that one self Atman that is the central teaching we taught you but this story will tell you that this knowledge theory is not sufficient, you have to put into practice. Once upon a time, there lived in the mountain forest an outlaw colony. Outlaw. Bandito. Bandito. And they're a colony. And they got their own chief. Chief of the Bandito. And they lived in the forest, they got their own colony, everything. And uh, most of the nights they go for raiding the cities and towns, looting, killing, raping, and carry the loot to their mountain. And they are enjoying their life. And the chief was very strong and very powerful. But he is getting old now. Getting older and older now. He doesn't have the same strength to run away when they've when they been chased, etc. So he decided to retire and give his job to his eldest son. In fact, he had only one son. So he called his other bandits, outlaws, and um, he told them, today is the ceremony, I am going to put my son in charge of this whole colony. I was running this colony for a long time, but you can see I am getting old. I am in the same strength, when it, just like when I was young. But my son is equally strong, intelligent. He will be able to guide you as well. <laughs> take care of this colony and take you for raiding parties, etc. So there was a big ceremony and was installed 
and have his tea. And there was a big feast. And the ceremony is over, feast is over. And the other bandits went to their own houses. But there was an old bandit there. He came to the new chief, end chief. So he called this new end chief, please come, I want to talk to you, our, you are our new chief, I want to talk to you something, a secret. So he is the oldest bandit in the colony. And uh, he knew him as an young son, he used to also help him in bringing up. So he went and they took him to a lonely place and sat. And the old bandit started talking to him. My son, you are our new chief. He said, yes, I will do everything like my father did. But tonight I heard that you are going for a raiding party to initiate show that your courage and your intelligence. That's the way every night they had to go areas to raid and to bring money for the colony. I heard that you are going tonight to a raiding party and you are going to we already made a target in a house in the in the town and there's a rich man and you had all the maps and all the things there. Yes, I got the map, I know the house, I know all the details, how many rooms there. I know the occupants, how many people are there, and I'm having about 15 people with me, and they are well equipped, well armed, and tonight, midnight, we we'll go, and if a rich man, we can, we know where the money is kept, so we are definitely going to bring, and I know how to do all these things. But the old bandit said, my son, you'll be surprised to hear something which I'm going to say. So, the, the new chief, all right, tell me, what's the secret? You are not the son of this chief, this, our chief, old chief. Your father is in the town where you are going to raid. Not only that, your real father is the house you are born. And tonight you are going to kill your own real father and mother and loot your own money, and burn your own house. The boy didn't understand all this. What are you talking? <coughs> then told, when he was a, when you were a small boy, this chief kidnapped you from that house and brought you to the colony. Though your real father paid a ransom, this chief did not have a son, he liked you very much and kept as his own son and brought it, brought him, uh, brought it up. This secret no one knows except me and your father, because I am the oldest. I know this story, because I was at that time at the trading party, but no one knows in this colony except your father and me. And your real father is the father and you are going to kill tonight and kill all your relatives, your mother and daughter, sisters and brothers and also you are going to loot your own money and you are going to burn your own house. That suddenly brought a shock. You could believe it. But certain sickness are there, you know, his own body reflections and face expression, everything is not like this old chief. Somehow many other things he explained, it was true. The boy believed. At that very moment, when he believed that his real father is down, his real father is a billionaire with millions of dollars and power, power and real father has a big house, his all belongs to him. The father and the son the same. So the very moment he heard about this, he is the millionaire himself. All that house, he doesn't have to raid, he doesn't have to kill anybody. He has to go to his father and say, I am your son everything will come to him automatically. But yet, he cannot, it, theoretically he is rich. Theoretically he knows his situation is a millionaire. <coughs> theoretically he doesn't have to do any more killing and looting. Only he has to recognize his father 
and father should recognize him. That's all he has to do. But he still emits the colony of these thieves and gods are everywhere. He cannot escape alone and they will suspect him. So he has to find a method to escape from the thief colony before they knew and go back to his father, real father, and then tell him about the situation and all the danger is coming up. So he sent this old bandit and sat and just tried to find out a method because another three hours there for raid because midnight will they go. So he called his selected people, selected bands, about twenty of them. <coughs> he called them. Um, I am your niece, chief, and we are going to take the raiding party. They said, we are all ready, we got weapons ready. But one thing, I am going to change the strategy of this night's raiding. First, I will go in, in, in incognito to the place and scout everybody, everything, what the situation everything and what kind of defense they have it. And then, like an ordinary man, I will go. And you all should come exactly in two hours and arrive there and hide in such and such place. And I will give a warning and let him be all will assault the house and do all the things what he decided. This is a new strategy I made. And actually he's the new chief. They all agree. So they said two hours. Before that I might have will go. So he got he went ahead and then arrived at the father's house and knocked the door. And father, who are you? Father, I am your son. You only recognize me. And then told the whole story. I was brought up in the bandit colony and so on. And I don't have much time to talk to you. And father looked at his Yes, the face is just like him. And there was tears and hugging and father was so happy. But father, there's danger coming. In another two hours, the house will be burnt and you all will be killed. I was supposed to come for that. I know only just an hour ago the situation. So prepare yourself with all your friends. Defend you. I will defend you also. And when I give the signal, they will attack. At that time, you know, you can ambush them and kill them all. And so immediately they collected all the people from the town. They were hiding in different spots. And um, the son went outside and gave the signal at that time. And those bandits came. By that time, they, were, they did not know they had been ambushed. The, all the bandits were killed. And the son himself was helping the father to destroy them. And not only that, they all went the same night. The entire town went to the forest and destroy the entire bandit colony. <laughs> and that's the story ends. This is a story about our life too. You heard the old teacher is the master of like Shivananda, Jesus, etc. They told you, oh man, you are not this body. You have been robbed of your real wealth and real thing. You are identified with this perishable body. You have been robbed by the Maya, the mind the bandit. You've been surrounded by this bandit. You are doing horrible things. You recognize the Father and all the wealth of the heaven and earth all belongs to you. You are the immortal Brahman. That's the art. You intellectually know. But still you are a prisoner of your mind and senses. You have to escape this mind, the senses, the five the senses which you are accustomed to. They are imprisoned you and you got the mind as a chief, and you thought the mind is the king, you had to escape. Oh, no, we taught the method to escape through this yoga method, and you practice this, and you'll be able to recognize your father. And then, oh, I and my father are one. I am not different from a God, Brahman. I am Brahman. There's nothing outside me. All knowledge is belong to me. All wealth is belong to me. I am that bliss. I am Ananda. I am knowledge. You realize that. And you destroyed the enemies. That infinite number of lives they had enemies all gone. Now you are a realized soul. So after this time you got only the theoretical knowledge. And we also taught how to practice, how to escape this thing. And escape through your Hard work, hard discipline, and realize the father. I am a father of
May the Lord bless you all. With that story, I'll conclude. And uh, tomorrow, we have exam, like all these things, whatever comes there. And then tomorrow evening, we go to castle, and we'll be, for a few minutes, few hours, there'll be princess and prince. <laughs> <laughs> and you come out of that. Don't stay permanently in the castle. <laughs> That's full of ghosts and spirits there. <laughs> you can pray a little bit when you go there.